In this section, we're going to look at identifying different fish diseases that might plague our populations of fish in our aquaponic systems at some point in time during normal operation. And I don't mean for this section to throw anybody off or cause concern or raise alarms, but it is important to be able to identify and recognize different fish diseases so that you can properly treat for and care for the fish in your aquaponic system. Additionally, you need to know what you're trying to treat in order to effectively treat it. So we need to become familiar with identifying things like bacterial or fungal fin rots or streptococcal infections or tuberculosis so that when we see our fish population not doing well or we start to see body sores or degradation of soft tissue on our fish, we can recognize what it is, treat it, and save our fish population. The first disease that we're going to look at is fin rot. And this is relatively common in aquaponic systems and in recirculating aquaculture systems. Not all of the diseases in this lecture are arranged from most common to least common, but this one's pretty common. And if you're growing things like tilapia that are a pretty aggressive fish, you're probably going to see fin rot at some point in time during the operation of your aquaponic systems. Fin rot is commonly caused by Pseudomonas, Aeromonas, and other similar bacteria. Fin rot often starts out as a whitening, almost cottony appearance along the edges of the fins and the outer edge of the tail. As fin rot progresses, it can lead to a deterioration of the soft tissue portions of the tail and fins, and it leaves behind this jagged look to the fins as you can see in the picture on the left hand side. Aggressive damage to the tails and fins can lead to secondary infections such as bacterial or fungal infections and can ultimately lead to fish death. If a fin rot infection progresses to the point where the majority of the tail and a lot of the fin has been rotted away or a harmful secondary infection has started in the fish, it can make it very difficult for the fish to swim eat and breathe properly, and this can lead ultimately to fish death. It's important to note when talking about things like bacterial fin rot or fungal fin rot infections that the harmful bacteria are always in the water, and it's just that healthy fish are significantly less susceptible to infection, so reducing stress, reducing damage to your fish, or stress when netting your fish can help you decrease the incidences of fin rot in your fish population. Additionally, maintaining proper water quality is critical to safeguarding your fish population against things like fin rot. Another fish disease that I really wish was more rare and that we didn't have to talk about is Streptococcus. Streptococcus can be caused by Streptococcus ineae or by Streptococcus agalactiae. Streptococcus infections can spread very rapidly through a fish population, and this can result in mortality rates of up to 40 to 50 percent in a very short period of time. Fish that are more than 100 grams, so larger fish, are typically more susceptible to Streptococcus infections than smaller fish. Also, one of the things that makes Streptococcus a really difficult disease to identify quickly and address in a timely manner is the fact that some fish might show external symptoms, though typically fish are terminal prior to showing visible symptoms. So it's not uncommon for you to start to see fish loss, and then as the streptococcus infection progresses through your fish population, start to notice a few individuals that are showing visible signs of the streptococcus infection that will allow you to address it, recognize what it is, and treat for it. So that does make dealing with a streptococcus infection in an aquaponic system and in a fish population in an aquaponic system pretty difficult and kind of a pain. Nevertheless, there are a few visible symptoms of streptococcus infections that you're going to want to keep an eye out for, particularly if you do start to see that some of your fish population is dying off and you can't really tell what it is. So as a streptococcus infection moves through your fish population, some of the individuals in your population might express streptococcus in the form of eye lesions or what's called Popeye, where the eyes are actually bulging farther out of their sockets than they normally would. 
Additionally, fish may develop lesions or ulcers around their mouth or the base of their fins and around their anus. Another common symptom of streptococcal infections is a reddening of the genitals of your fish. So you're going to want to inspect your fish either once they've died or some of your fish that might look extremely sick for these visual symptoms to start to get a handle on whether what you're dealing with and what you're looking at is a streptococcus infection. Another very visual symptom of streptococcus, particularly as it progresses aggressively in an individual, is nervous system damage that leads to swirling. And so swirling is when a fish kind of swims in a circle and doesn't have a lot of control over its vertical position or its movement through the water. So they'll typically lay a little bit on their side and they'll swim in a circular pattern, often towards the surface of your tank. Additionally, if streptococcus is moving its way through your fish population, the population as a whole will often experience reduced feeding rates and lethargic swimming. So again, as we've discussed in the previous lectures, you want to keep an eye on your fish population and you want to keep track of how they're acting and changes in their behavior. So if you do see lethargic swimming where your fish just don't seem too interested in anything and they're not feeding as aggressively as they typically do, you'll want to use that as one of your early indicators that you should be inspecting your fish for other symptoms of different diseases. And you might want to look at some of your older fish for different things like body lesions and ulcers or damage around their mouths or reddening genitals or any of these other symptoms that we discuss with these different fish diseases. Another fish disease that you might see in your aquaponic system, though, it's more common in young fish, so typically in nursery systems or in nursery hospital tanks you might see this, is ick. And ick is caused by a parasite that, again, commonly infects young fish. Ick can lead to reduced growth in the fish and fish mortality. Ick often appears as little white spots along the body of the fish. It's important to remember when treating fish for ick that certain life stages of this parasite are not easily killed. And although salt baths and salt dips are an effective treatment against ick, they must be carried out even after the symptoms subside to ensure that you've killed off the parasite as it moves through its various life stages. One of the less common fish diseases that we see in aquaponic systems, but it does happen every now and again, so it's worth discussing, is hole in head. The particular cause for hole in head is actually up for debate, but it's often attributed to the parasite Hexamida. Hole in head presents itself as pitting lesions in the head or the lateral lines of the fish. So it's not necessarily just holes in head, uh, it can also be bored out holes or lesions down the sideline or the lateral line of your fish. One of the big problems with hole and head is that the pits or the holes often open up wounds that lead to secondary bacterial and fungal infections that can be harmful to the fish and lead to mortality problems. It's important to note that prevention is key to mitigating hole and head in your fish population. The best ways to avoid problems with hole and head are to maintain clean tanks and avoid overstocking. This helps to ensure that proper water quality is maintained in your fish tanks. Additionally, you should ensure that fish receive a healthy diet and clean feeds. As you can see in the photo on the right hand side, this fish is experiencing an aggressive case of hole and head. You'll also note that it is a terrible photo, and this is because the water quality in this system was absolutely horrible. There was a high level of suspended solids, there was a lot of fish feed floating on the top of the tanks and rotting in the bottom of the tanks, and the water quality was all jacked up. Again, if you want to avoid having problems with hole and head infections in your fish, cleanliness is next to godliness and prevention is key. So, Maintain clean fish tanks, ensure that your water quality is maintained at proper levels, and ensure that your fish are receiving healthy diets of clean feed.
Another relatively rare fish disease that I've only seen once or twice in aquaponic systems is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is caused by the colonization of mycobacterium species. Fish suffering from tuberculosis typically become pale in coloration. Additionally, fish will become lethargic and slow during feedings. It's very common for large lesions to develop on the bodies of infected fish. And unfortunately, tuberculosis infections in fish often lead to death. Again, I want to note that tuberculosis is incredibly rare. Typically, claims of tuberculosis actually turn out to be advanced streptococcus infections, and they're very hard to distinguish between the two. Tuberculosis is typically spread through an aquaponic system through two ways. First, TB is transmitted throughout the population through contact-to-contact -contact body sores along the infected fish. Additionally, what makes tuberculosis so difficult to handle in an aquaponic system is the fact that TB can be spread through excrement, which makes it particularly aggressive in recirculating aquaculture systems, and particularly in aquaponic systems where you have a high level of suspended solids in the fish tanks and the clarifiers and circulating throughout the aquaponic system. The last fish disease that we're going to look at is koi herpes virus, and this is specific to koi and those of you who might look to grow koi inside of your aquaponic system. Again, koi herpes virus is incredibly rare. It's heavily surveyed for in commercial fish farms and in commercial propagation facilities, so the chances of you getting koi herpes virus in your aquaponic system is incredibly low. But just so that you're aware of what's out there, and just so that when you're surveying your fish, you know what you're looking for. We're going to just walk through some of the common symptoms and what makes koi herpes virus particularly aggressive. Koi herpes virus, or KHV, is highly contagious and can rapidly result in 80 to 100% mortality rates in your fish population. Again, it's incredibly rare, but if it gets into your koi population, it's incredibly aggressive. In individuals suffering from koi herpes virus, you'll notice that the gills become mottled with white spots of dead necrotic tissue. As the gill tissue continues to suffer and die, bleeding is very commonly seen from the gills of the infected fish. Additionally, infected koi may develop sunken eyes. As of right now, there's no real good treatments or vaccines for koi herpes virus. And koi herpes virus outbreaks are common when the water temperature is between 16 and 25 degrees Celsius, so relatively warm for a koi population. One thing that's a little bit backwards from most other diseases that we see in fish populations is that increasing the water temperature to about 30 degrees Celsius may actually slow the spread of koi herpes virus. But this can increase incidences of bacterial and fungal infections, attacking the open wounds that have formed on your infected fish. So it can slow KHV, but it does increase bacterial and fungal infections. With most other fish diseases, decreasing the water temperature allows the fish to heal up and pulls those infections, pulls those bacterial and fungal infections out of their preferred water temperature zone and slows their spread. The number one way that you can avoid ever seeing koi herpes virus in your aquaponics system is to purchase fish from reputable suppliers. Large koi breeders and suppliers have to have their fish population tested and surveyed for things like koi herpes virus on a regular schedule. And this is because koi herpes virus is tracked by groups like Department of Ag and the USDA. So whenever you're looking to grow koi in your aquaponics system, purchase those koi from a reputable supplier or a large commercial breeder.